This podcast is brought to you by Onnit. Go to Onnit.com and look at the great selection of supplements. If you find something you like, press in code Joey and get 10% off delivered right to your house. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's Wednesday, the 17th of August. The joint is brought to you by DraftKings, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. UFC 278 has an action-packed card this Saturday night. It's Usman against Edwards, the rematch, and it's going fucking down, Jack. This Saturday, new customers can bet $5 to get 200 in free bets instantly, win or lose. If that's not enough action for you, only shit you can get up to a ten dollar risk-free same day parlay combine multiple bets like which fighter will come out on top or how long the fight will last or will he knock out a disqualification or a knockout or a fucking decision listen i don't have any fight i'm looking at paula costa I'm looking at the Luke Rock called Paula Costa fight. I'm looking at the Usman Edwards fight. And I'm looking at another fight. But nothing's decided till I see the fucking weigh-ins on Friday. But before you get the fucking weigh-ins, download the DraftKings app right now today. Use promo code Joey. You're going to bet $5 in any UFC 278 fight and get 200 in free bets instantly, win or lose. That's code Joey, J-O-E-Y, this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the motherfucking UFC. Here's the part the lawyers make me say. Minimum age res- restrictions apply. See the show notes for details. Now, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. It's time to make some motherfucking money. Football is upon us also. And do not forget... We're also brought to you by, oh my God, fucking go.factor75.com. Tremendous food. The summer's winding down. These are going to be the last two busy weeks than ever. That's why I save time with Factor. Factor is ready to eat meal delivery. With Factor, a quick lunch or dinner is just two minutes away. These heat and eat meals are a lifesaver. Factor offers over 30 meals per week, and you can change your order up to every week. Choose 4 to 18 meals per week. Pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Stop spending precious hours in the store and then in the kitchen sweating like a fucking maggot. Let Factor deliver ready-made meals right to your door. Each Factor meals arise prepared by their team of chefs, and they're ready to heat and eat in two minutes. They offer vegan, veggie, keto, pressed juices, smoothies, which are fucking tremendous. The energy bites are great and so much more. So do me a favor. Head on over to go.factor75.com slash joey130. Again, go.factor75.com slash joey130. I'm going to get you $130 off your first six boxes that's joey code 130 at go.factor75.com slash joey 130 to save 130 dollars off your first order listen so you got food you got some money to make bets with now you need to fucking get that dick harder than fucking arithmetic listen confidence can take you far it took me far but not in the bedroom that's where blue chew comes in Blue Chew is an online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis at a fraction of the cost. I love fucking Blue Chew. They send you a little pouch. You can put one in your wallet. When you're ready to sling dick, voila, it's right in your wallet. And the process is simple. You sign up at BlueChew.com. You consult one of their medical providers. And once approved, you'll you'll receive your prescription within days. That's when you call the freaks, Jack. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and shipped in a discreet package. You can benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform. I'm not saying you got AD. Blue Chew can help you either way. Why show up with a hard dick when you could show up with a with Superman's dick? You understand me? Try Blue Chew for free when using promo code Joey. Just pay $5 for shipping. BlueChew.com code Joey for your first month free. Thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the joint. Let's get this party started. I've been talking too much.
What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? Uncle Joey here. Welcome to the joint. August the 7th, motherfucking teeth. It's a beautiful goddamn day to be alive. I want to talk to you guys. Listen, I'm getting fucking older, you know, uh, as you guys could tell. The problem is I don't have no young people. I, I, I don't have no old people watching me. Old people think like I'm a fucking joke. We probably got a couple 50-year-olds on Patreon and stuff like that. But the the viewership or the people who listen to the show are usually between like 20 and 35. That's my big fucking audience. That's why people always want to jump on me and ask me how I attracted such, such a young audience. Like that's the beauty of this whole journey that I don't have old people coming to see me. It's not like I do a show and people come dressed up in suits with hats and their wives are all dolled up. Those savages go to like fucking see Jim Gaffigan or something like that. Those people don't want to see a fucking savage like me. But I feel at times, like, even at my age, uh, I, what I've always wanted to be was to offer a, a voice, like a like an adult voice that isn't your parent, it's not your uncle, it's not some fucking boss at work that's trying to groom you to be a butterscotch maker, whatever the fuck they're trying to groom you to be. But what we have here is just a guy that wants to spread some of his fucking knowledge. And a lot of people discourage me, uh, discount me because of uh, the felonies and stuff like that. To me, that's been my strength, the, all the fuck-ups I had. When I look over that book, I go, wow, I'm not a funny guy. I'm, I'm a fucking survivor. I, I figured out how to fucking survive, you know. And when you see other survivors, they fucking, you, you look at them and go, wow. That dude's a fucking survivor. A ton of things have happened in his life, and he still wakes up with a fucking smile on his face every day, ready to tackle the day. I spoke to some guy a couple weeks ago. He sent me an email that he had been down, that he doesn't leave his house. He's 54 fucking years old. He hasn't left the house. He's had a lot of death in his life, you know, and I'm like, everybody's had a, their own personal Vietnam. Everybody, everybody, you know, and like the man says, every hooker got a, a hard luck story. I'm a hooker. I, I fucking appease to you guys to sell tickets. I'm a hooker. I'm a fucking hooker. And I know that. But when you see people who are survivors, they fucking inspire the fuck out of you, regardless of what's coming out of their fucking mouth. You know, regardless, they're doing something that might help you someday. You're not looking at it like that now, but one day you'll, some of that knowledge, you'll go, holy fuck, this is what this guy said. This is what Joey said. This is what Joe Rogan said. Or Tom Segura, we've been through it. So, and, and a lot of people, when you've been through something and I sit you down and go, hey man, I've been through this. Let me tell you how to get out of it. And you look at me and go, I got a better way. And then you fail, you know, that's what we're here for. And I'm not going to say to you, hey, you fucked up. No, it's just uh, we have a better way sometimes. Hey, listen, I don't know how to change a flat tire. I don't know how to paint the fucking house. I don't know a lot of things, but I know one thing. I know about life. I told you motherfuckers L.A. was getting bad. Where are we now? I know the streets, and I know what motivates and what gets people fired the fuck up. And when I look at Stu Finer, like the first time I had Stu on the podcast, I got a lot of shit from people. Like, you know, he's just noisy. He's just loud. That's what you see. That's the first thing you see, and you get, can't get past it. What I see is a guy that had, he was a millionaire and a bum 10 times over. So obviously he knows something, okay? You know, at night, Stu sends me his picks for the fucking week. This guy is money. I get picks from a lot of people. Like, people go, hey, look at this game or, you know. Stu is fucking money. Those $20,000 bets he has are no fucking joke. I gave one to Lee. I go, Lee, how much you win? He goes, I only bet $15. I go, Lee, the guy told you to bet a $20,000 all minimum fucking bet on this shit. The guy is that good. But it's not only that that I'm uh, I'm excited about him. It's like what he's doing now. You know, he's he, he decided to do a fucking cleanse at 61. I mean, just the fact the guy's smoking blunts at 61 has to tell you how much out of his fucking mind he is. But he's good-hearted. He's a good family man. That's a lot of people don't see. When you see guys like Stu, myself, you're like, oh, these guys are fucking out, fucking around all day. No. That's the image we give you. That's the image we give you. I, when people get to meet me, they're like, Jesus Christ. You know, I went to this party Saturday night, and uh, he's a young kid. He came over, and he spoke to me. I saw the lady who threw the party yesterday, and we were talking, and she goes, you know, my nephew was really shocked by you. That He goes, you were very quiet. You were watching the game. You were playing with your daughter. 
He thought that it was going to be a smoking He was in shock that you weren't high. Going, he fucked up. I was high. That's the only way I would have gone to the fucking party. Is stoned to the gills. But I put Visine on, and my eyes are already used to it. You know, I did smoke some fucking tremendous yesterday, and I had to go to get medication at CVS. I took two fucking rips of this shit. Do you know I had to pull over before CVS, guys? You guys know me a long fucking time. I had to pull over my eyes, guys. Look like somebody had poked me. I, I thought it was a UFC fighter that kept poking me in the fucking eye. Both of them were bloodshot. I kept hearing a hum in my head. Mm. I'm like, I got to pull the fuck over. I pulled over for like seven minutes. I drank my water. And then I went to the fucking parking lot. I walked into CVS. Thank God there wasn't a line. I walked out of there when nobody even saw me. But I fucking was like, holy shit, I'm fucking stoned. Like, I'm getting stoned again. Like, remember high school stoned where you got stoned and you immediately had to eat something and that type of shit. But again, because I smoke pot, people discredit me. People go, well, he doesn't really know what I'm talking about. Well, guess what? With no fucking college education, none of that shit, I made it all the way to here. So obviously we knew something. And for me, it was my heart. And my balls that overcame a lot of things. Trust me, my heart and balls got me into a lot of problems also. But at the end, it did a lot better for me than not having fucking balls, you know. But without further ado, I don't want to talk no more shit. I, you know, Stu came on today. We did a Zoom, which I know you motherfuckers don't like. But again, who gives a fuck what you like? Look at what he's got to say. Look at what he's got to learn from. And maybe you could apply one of his things to your fucking life. We have no fear. We don't give a fuck. Like he said, listen, we don't give a fuck if you shut the lights out, or cancel me. They tried. Remember a couple of years ago? Well, Joe Rogan laughed. I, the other day I had to do an interview with a newspaper. A reporter called me out of the blue. And he goes, I'd like to get your take on something. And we were talking about stand up, you know, stand up in a woke culture. culture. I think it's uh, some guy in Texas, Houston. And he goes, there's something I gotta, we have to discuss. He goes, I read into this whole thing. What the fuck was that? <laughs> And I go, guys, to this day, I can't realize what that was. That somebody saw a video from 2012 and tried to attack me and Rogan. But the funny thing was like they were throwing Rogan under the bus. It happened with Spotify. With Spotify happened. It was the Spotify people, the jealousy in the air. And they tried to tell Rogan was laughing at my joke. If you think about that now, who the fuck got pissed at that? I know who got pissed at that, and I know who lit the fire to try to fucking get us down, but guys, it ain't going to happen. For all you motherfuckers that want it to happen, suck my dick. It's never going to happen. We're here, and I'm calling the fucking shots of when I leave or when I come back or whatever. I don't play that shit at all with you cocksuckers, and that's my thing. I don't give a fuck when I go on stage anymore. I'm going to say things that are going to offend people, and I'm doing it on purpose. I'm doing it on purpose. All these other jack-off comics try to be cute with doing it. No, no, no. I'm not going to try to be cute. I'm telling you I'm fucking doing it because I don't give a fuck anymore. It's free reign out there. You want to be woke? That's your fucking business. Take your woke ass down the fucking corner or take your tranny ass down the corner. But in my motherfucking world, you ain't canceling nobody no more. So go cancel Mr. Big. He was back on the equalizer last week. So what did you fucking accomplish, people? You accomplish nothing. You know, you don't know what really goes on. You you let somebody from 20 years ago come at you, not even knowing that situation, not even knowing her credibility or his credibility. You just believe in them. You know what I'm saying? Go fuck yourself. Anyway, enjoy Stu Fine, the cocksuckers. I'm not coming back after it. Word, I'm gonna, it's going to close up, and we're going right for the sponsors. I'm going on vacation next week. We might have a podcast for you on Monday, and we might not. If not, we'll be back on the 29th. I think it's the 29th, Monday the 29th. But don't forget, get your fucking DraftKings. Download the DraftKings fantasy app because they're doing. I'm, I'm learning about fantasy this year. Anyway, now Stu Finer. Enjoy. Have a great weekend. Check one two. Welcome to Uncle Joey's Joy. Welcome to the joint, Tarzan. <laughs> What's up, my brother? Look how good you fucking look. How many pounds have you lost? Um, well, I got up to 220 
And then, but I started the 52 week transformation at 210. Now I'm 192 and a half, seven weeks. You, you look great. You have a glow to you. It's never too fucking late to be a savage, brother. You are. <laughs> Ain't that the fucking truth? Holy shit. You know, man, I told you, when I look at your pictures, you have the best Instagram, one of the best. It just never ends. Thank you. Not the Instagram, the Twitter I follow you. I think I might got you on Instagram, but Twitter, you are fucking hilarious on that. The food, the kids, the yelling. Yesterday, you were yelling off the top of your lungs. I'm like, this fucking guy. Is never gonna die. He's just, he's been yelling like that for forty fucking years. Wild, it's wild. Listen, I mean, with the uh, my that's my son's best friend, uh, Harrison, that cooks the food, and it's so easy. Instead of ordering out or instead of you know deciding what I'm going to eat for the day, it's right in front of me, and I can pick and choose from, let's say, the chicken meatballs or the ground turkey stuffed in peppers, or the salmon, or the shrimp, or veggies. So it gives me a lot of choices. And then, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm so motivated right now. It's crazy, Joey. I'm up at 4 a.m. waiting for the fucking crack of dawn. I go downstairs, have a cup of coffee. I have my banana, and I have my shoes are on, and I'm just waiting to walk out the fucking door. And it's like a slow jog into a sprint, into a fast walk. So I either do a 6.1 mile uh, per day or 10.8 a day. And uh, now I'm in a group. Now I'm in a group. I've done, I've done over like 213 miles and I did a 10.8 this morning like it was butter. And now it's much easier because when we had that heat wave, I'm waking up at four in the morning, it's fucking 90 degrees. So the minute I go outside, I'm sweating my fucking dick off and I put the glide on so my ball sack doesn't get rubby or my thighs don't get rubby and uh, I'm ready to roll. And it's great because it sets my day the entire day. Like the, the 10.8 miles takes me about two hours and 45 minutes. And then the, uh, one po- uh, the six takes me, you know, like about an hour 30. But you know, it just cleanses me. So anything that's on my mind, any negative energy, anything that's really bothering me in my gut, whether it's my family, you know, my kids, my wife, my father, business, whatever it is, you know, I get it out in a positive way instead of stuffing it or I used to use the carbs or the sugar or the marijuana. And then that would get me in a fog where I would have to constantly eat the smoke or do the carbs or do the sugar to keep that level up or the caffeine. Like, I'll be honest with you. The main thing I miss the most is unlimited coffee. Like I drink a Starbucks French roast. So I only am allowed three a day, one at four in the morning, one right after the run, and then one right with my eggs. And uh, I miss that. I'm telling you, I love my caffeine high. I love that coffee. I was drinking like 10 to 12 cups a day Now I'm down to three. So, uh, but it's a different lifestyle. You know, I'm trying to do a one year transformation. I want to go down to between 150 to 155 pounds, which then that'll give me ability to run marathons at will under four hours, like it's butter. And I'm going to try to do a triathlon, not the full triathlon, but it's like a 13 mile run. It's a one mile swim. And then it's like 40 miles on the bike. And that would be my ultimate goal to do that. Cause that's the one thing that's on my bucket list that I never actually did. So, uh, but again, I'm just looking for 12 months of just clean, sober abstinence. You know, when I say clean, sober abstinence, I mean, no sugar, uh, limited carbs, no cakes, cookies, ice cream, and then no marijuana. And then, um, it's so much easier to live, to be honest with you, because you know, look, we know I still got a tremendous amount of problems. Still fight with my wife every fucking day. Fight with my kids every fucking day. Never a smooth day ever. It just that's not life. Life is problems and how you know you really handle the fucking problems. So basically, um, I'm in a good groove right now, and I'm handling the problem so much easier. I'm not overreacting. I'm not you know verbally abusing people because like when I my first thing when I do my walk is when I start the day is uh, I pray. And I say, please, God, give me the strength to be abstinent from my compulsive overeating, my gambling, my drug addiction, my sexual behavior, my abusive language, my compulsive spending and my selfishness. So I'm like, I have eight fucking addictions. And it's probably the reason I haven't killed myself because I have a little of everything. So I never really had just that one. 
then I would fucking be, you know, free basing in the fucking corner, you know, fucking whores, and I'd be dead already. So I had a little of all the evils. And then when I'm on the straight and narrow, um, a lot of people say, Stu, do you miss it? I'm like, fuck no. It's so much harder to fucking smoke a half ounce of pot a day, roll seven blunts, you know, fucking, you know, do an eight ball and still have to act like I'm a fucking human. You know what I'm saying? Say hello to everybody. Do what I got to do. So uh, it feels good to be healthy. Um, it's going on seven weeks right now. So I don't have that phenomenon of craving where let's say the first four weeks I'm jonesing, you know, like every day I'm just holding on for dear life. The first two weeks, nobody in my family spoke to me because I'm motherfucking everybody. I'm like, get the fuck away from me. What'd you say to me? They're like, dad, I didn't say anything. You know, and the only person that can give me pure joy where there's no bullshit is my dog. You know, dog is unconditional love. Hug it out with the dog. Dog could lick its ass for 10 minutes and I let it lick my face. I'm tongue in the dog. I don't give a fuck. It's my dog. So, but, uh, you know, I'm in a good place. Thank God. And uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to fucking roll from there. And I'm coming normally. I normally crash right now coming into the regular season, my busy season, which is September through March. And I normally have to lose weight, stop smoking pot, get off the sugar, get off the carbs. And it's like, it's a rat race. Like I can't do it because once the season starts, it's just too stressful. But now at least I'm coming in with like, I'll I'll come in with almost 10 weeks under my belt and I feel positive that everything's going to flow. So I'm looking forward to it. And then uh, I just went online. Now I saw that you, is this your first book you ever wrote? Yes. The only book I I, I didn't really write it. I helped Erica Florentine write it. Jimmy Florentine's sister from, he used to have a show over at uh, Barstool. Oh, wow. That's amazing. (laughs) Yes. So this, so you dictated to him, and, and he wrote. Well, I had to fucking outline it. I had to cry. You know, you got to do all that shit when you write a book because, for like three years, you rub your fucking face in dirt. You're talking about your past, and it's bringing you back, and you're getting mm. those feelings sometimes. It's very tough. The first fucking five. Well, listen, I, I've been trying to write that book. How I tried to quit cocaine. I've been trying to write that book for ten fucking years, mm. and it finally took. You right. Know, I found somebody who I could work with. Very interesting. I would love to do it again. I would love to write a couple books about different things in time. You know, I'm no fucking, uh, what's that guy in Cuba that wrote the boat? I don't know, whoever. The, that guy used to drink pina coladas on the beach, not Shakespeare, Hemingway. I'm no fucking oh, okay. Hemingway, but, you know, it's interesting to write, Stu. And everybody has an ability in them. But if you keep buying books to teach you how to write, you're never going to be a writer. The easiest thing, I realized after 10 years, just fucking throw away the books and put paper, put pen on that paper. Right. Well, let the I, notebook boo you until whatever, and then you start getting better and better, you know, and next thing you know, you know how to outline. I called authors. I spoke to different people. It was rough. It beat me the fuck up, to be honest with you. It really made me a different person because... You're constantly looking at your fucking life every day, you know, right. no matter right. nothing really like you start comparing shit and you're like, you know what I got? I couldn't wait when the book was finished. Mm. I could, and the funny thing was that I had all the early stuff as a pot smoker. It makes you laugh because now you see the effects of marijuana, which I'm not complaining about. But the book was very simple from my coming from Cuba to me. About 2000 was when the book got fucking difficult because I don't remember nothing. Mm. I don't remember a fucking, I remember the longest yard. I remember, you know, mad TV, but what was going on? It was, it, there was so much going on. Plus there was so much cocaine in my world at that time. Mm. I was trying to do comedy and continue a fucking junkie lifestyle. And there was the end. You could see that the end was either I was going to die or I had a quick comedy. There was no, I was starting to get jolts in my neck. Like, every time I do a fucking line, I get jolts in the middle of the night and then the next day. So I knew something was going to break. But the book has been a great experience. I can't wait for it to come out. I got one more month with legal because now is when they ask you. Like, they, you know, now we're going into a different chapter, a different, like, there's three things. There's, like, early life, criminal career, and then comedy. We broke it into three things. So by the time I got to, like, the criminal career and shit, you know, you got to tell what you did. And I wanted the audience to know 
how bad I had it. I wanted them to know how bad it really was. I push it aside. Then my buddies call me and go, bro, I give you credit. I remember seeing you when you were 17 and you were raising yourself. You were raising yourself. I mean, that's never been done before. You were raising yourself. And so all those things it combined, like, I'm fucking ready. You know, you, you go through it. But that was the hardest thing. It was 20, 2000 to fucking recently. It was horrible. So we had to take our time and research shit. But now lawyers are calling the people because, you know, they want to know if people are dead. I can't be telling stories of robbing people in Harlem, you know, chasing some drug dealer down the West Side Highway. You know, they, they're they like a little scared. And I, I, I understand. So we've cleaned up some stuff. Now we're about to clean up some more stuff. And then that's it. But still, I'm like, it, it's very, I don't know. How, it, make, it it What you're doing inspires me. Nice. You know, I don't nice. want to quit smoking pot. So that's no, my I, thing. I'm not, I'm not, let me tell you something, Stu. I'm not smoking the pot I was at all. There's no reason to quit. This is like two bung hits here and one fucking freeze pipe hit at night, and I'm done. Once in a great blue while, if I have insomnia, I roll a fucking joint. Right. But I haven't written a roll the joint in fucking months like that, you know, like I used to. So I've cut down. On, and people at home don't really understand what you're saying at times, how intense your life is this ain't no fucking joke if you look at stress and stuff i think after i met you in 91 i, I clocked you at 10 years because right. you were such a high energy guy you can't continue that pace but people don't know there's a yin and a yang and guys like you utilize yin and a yang when we have the yang we go all the fuck out but when we're off <clears throat> cramp camera we're laying down with our feet up batting the fucking dog People think guys like you and I are out at night eating somebody's asshole, snorting coke, lighting their pussy on fire. I mean, I'd like to do that if I still could, but I can't. I'm, I'm you know. So it's very inspiring what you're doing, Stu. Thank you. you. Know, and I see what you're doing. You're getting ready for football season, so you're your best. You've had a phenomenal fucking baseball season the last weeks. <clears throat> You've been totally on fucking fire the last two weeks of baseball. The totals, I mean, you know, and it's hard what you do. It's no, very I, fucking hard, but I see the 30-year experience when you give out your picks. I understand now. Ah, I see what this motherfucker's doing. He's a savage. Right. So, I mean, like, with the thing I, I miss, like, I miss rolling the blunt. I miss hanging with my kids and smoking because, for me, smoking, like, brings me back to a child again. I'm fucking 61, but I roll a blunt and I'm smoking. I'm telling stories of people and I roll a second blunt. I roll a third blunt. I take a thousand milligrams of edibles and people are looking at me like, are you fucking retarded? What's the matter with you? Aren't you high? I'm like, yeah, but I just, I just love it. I just love, I almost love the act of doing it. And the reason I had to stop, it wasn't like God came down and there was this catharsis and it's like, wow, I'm going to be clean. My fucking doctor put me against the wall. My sugars were 460. My A1C for over a year straight was over 13. And he said, I don't know how you're not dead yet or how you haven't gone blind or how your dick doesn't, it still works or how your feet haven't fallen off. But it's only a matter of time. You're just going to be walking around one day in front of your fucking kids and you're going to die. You're going to just fucking die and ain't going to be bringing you to the hospital and saving you. You're fucking dead. And for some reason, it just hit me that it, it's a it's a very simple decision when the power of that hit me because it was either I was going to live or I was going to die, and I was killing myself. And damn straight, there's nobody that loves smoking pot more than me. There's nobody that loves eating fifteen thousand calories more than me and just fucking acting like a child, hanging with the kids bonding with the kids, acting like a kid, meaning no responsibility. You feel invincible. There's nothing you can't do. You can snort an eight ball. You can snort a second fucking eight ball. And then you're ready to fucking go. You know what I mean? And you're ready to roll. And you and me, for some reason, God has given us the ability. We, you know, we got 10 lives each. We should have been dead, you know, 20 years ago. But by the grace of God, God has given us the strength to come back from failure after failure, catastrophe after catastrophe, self-sabotage after self-sabotage after self-sabotage. You know, we don't lose our enthusiasm. You know, you know, they, they don't make them like you and me no more because they, you, 
You could kill us. We're coming fucking back, baby. We're coming back from the dead. You know, you're the phantom sports. Uh, you're the phantom comedian. I'm the phantom fucking handicapper. Just like Steve Mahalik was the phantom bodybuilder. You know, after he did his steroids and he did all his drugs and he fucked thousands of women, got in a fucking car accident and almost died. And he told me these stories and then it gave me the strength. So like you're a power example for me, because now that, you know, like when I talk to comedians, you're the comedian's comedian. Like not only do people fucking love you, but the pros love you because like nobody ever wants to go on after you. That's all I that's all the fucking rep used to have. Like if you were fucking in the room and they had to come on after you, it was a nightmare for them because you destroyed the audience. You know, like when you kill for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes and then someone else comes on, you got nothing left. You got like even the little teeny parts when I saw you in Atlantic City and you banged out like 20 minutes. I fucking died because I fucking love you. You could fucking say hello. And I'm like, (laughs) because because I fucking genuinely love you. You know, I feel that we have a kindred bond. We have a kindred spirit. We come different stories, different circumstances, but from the same place, you know, you come from Cuba, you're a Cuban, I'm a fucking Jew. We both were treated like second class citizens. We were treated like, you know, like scum, you know, like people did not treat us right. And the reason I think we got balls of fucking stone and a heart that won't fucking quit and a desire that, you know, I, I'm going to do it because I've been to fucking hell. I've been dead already. Nothing you could fucking do to me, baby. Nothing. I've been to fucking hell. I've been fucking wishing. I wish to die. Couldn't kill myself. Couldn't fucking die. It's our story. So, I, again, I'm an inspiration to you. You're an inspiration to me. So it, it feels good that we bonded again. I cannot wait to introduce you for your show. So I'm just going to fucking be screaming, yelling. I'm going to be yelling. So I'm going to lose my fucking voice that night. Just get in that crowd. That crowd's going to be so hyped when you fucking walk on. We might have to have tenfold security because they might jump on the fucking stage and want to hug you and eat your ass and blow you and finger <laughs> fuck your ball sack. You know, that's what's going to fucking happen. It's going to be fucking insane. We got a DJ. We got weed coming. They're going to give out fucking envelopes, laughing gas. It's, it's, uh, I'm excited. Listen, anything on, when they said Broadway, if you know anything about anybody who grew up in this area, especially in the 70s, Broadway was everything. In my world, it's Broadway and Bergen Line Avenue in, in Jersey. Those are my two that I know every nook. You know, every I walked. I used to live on 88th Street, and I'd walk to Times Square and watch movies with my godfather as a kid. No English. No fucking English. So you have no idea. Mm. When I think of fucking Joey Diaz on Broadway, even though it's my name, I think about walking down Broadway and seeing a big fucking statue of George Lazenby, that one half a fag James Bond they had for a while. He came in for one movie in between, like The Saint and uh, Sean Connery or something. That's what I would think of. Like, that's the pride I get in my heart. Like, you know what? Yeah, I did this. This happened. This happened. But this is Broadway. You can't take this from somebody. No, and this is a fucking Trump. This is like when people say to me, well, I saw, you know, uh, Paul McCartney last week for the small 800, bitch. I saw fucking David Gilmore do the solo to Comfortably Numb on top of the wall at the Nassau Coliseum for $15.50. Suck my dick and call me shorty. It don't get better than that for 15 fucking dollars, you know? These are things that I did that uh, mean the world to me. So Broadway, I've even started writing a little bit. Like I just, something inspired me a couple. I said, I'm going to put the notebook down till I get back from vacation. Fuck that. The other night I was like, let me break this down. I want to give them a good show. It's going to take time, but, you know, it's going to be, every show is going to be better than the last one, you know, and then uh, let's see where the fuck it takes us. Right, five shows, that's going to be amazing. So, so, yeah, a man without a plan is not, and then I got Philadelphia I'm releasing the night before Thanksgiving. Okay. And that's a great fucking casino, Parks Casino. Oh, nice. I mean, I didn't want to do any casinos, but this one is exceptional. The food is great. When I go to Philadelphia, I mean, I'm from Jersey, I'm from New York City, but when I go to Philadelphia, I just feel like I'm one of them. As crazy as this seems, when people talk about Philadelphia, I take a little bit of offense in my heart when they call them animals a savage. Then I go, you know what? I am an animal and a fucking savage. Let me tell you how much I love Philadelphia. And Mike will tell you, the last time I did parks, I usually go in the back and get my head together, drink some water, you know, make sure I don't have armpit fucking odor. 
And then I go out and shake hands and see everybody. In Philadelphia, I just put the mic in, and I jumped into the audience. And I was out there with them. You know how many people grabbed my cock in Philadelphia? You know how many men? There was a guy that came up to me and he goes, Ma, Ma, this is Uncle Joey. I told you he's got balls. And why he got, he said to his mom he had balls. He kneeled. And he grabbed my cock. And I don't know what to do because I know the guy's not doing it out of disrespect. (laughs) He's just grabbing my balls going, Ma. These are fucking balls. I wish you could show them to you. Would you show them to my mother? Come on, man. I'm fucking 58. You want me to show my balls to your mother? What is wrong with these Philadelphia motherfuckers? But on the drive home, you la- no security. There was no security. I don't need security in Philadelphia. I don't need security in two places, Philadelphia and fucking the Bronx. I don't know what it is with Puerto Ricans. They stick on to me. I love them with all my heart. I just went to Yankee Stadium. Two Puerto Ricans stuck on to me. They walked me to my fucking chair. <laughs> That's and they're awesome. like, nobody's going to mess with you, right? And I'm like, wow. Look well, they have stuff. passion. They have the passion they that you really have. do. Philadelphia like, well, nobody's has gonna ma- mess with you in the Bronx. major fucking passion in the Bronx, but major passion in Philadelphia, too. I mean, absolutely. I think Parks Casino is Barstool's uh, signature uh, sports book. I love him. I yeah. fucking love it. I think that's, a, that's their great signature casino, sports Great book. food. The hotel's across the street. So if you got a chaser, you know what I'm saying? She's across the street. Let me ask you a question, Stu. Go. When the yes. fuck... Are you going to write a book? Well, I did write a book. I have a book written. Okay. Did you know that? Yeah, it's called. No. Yeah, it's called. Uh, here. Etch I Can. So I released this right after the movie Two for the Money, and I released this. And then that, that, was, my, that was my book. And then this book starts off. This book is similar to, like, your story a little bit, where it starts off um, where I'm about to kill myself. I'm about to take pills and end it because I, my wife finally found out that I owed like, you know, half a million dollars to friends, family, mafia, and I was jammed up and I told her nothing about my position and I was balls broke and I was about to lose everything. And then she found out not by me being honest and telling her so that um, that's how the book starts. And it starts from all the way from the beginning um, to, uh, you know, when I made it. So in other words, it's a great story. And uh, I'm looking again, similar to you, once you release your book, I'm looking to write a second book now. My second book, I would want to continue with the Barstool Sports Advisor story in addition to doing stand-up comedy. I always wanted to do one night at Westbury. So that's 3,500 fucking place out. You know, Big Cat and PFT and all the Barstool people said they would come. You know, I would pray to God, my grace on it would be you fucking introduced me. Wanna, I, I just got an offer for the Paramount. Oh. But if you want to do Westbury, we could do Westbury. I would want, let's let's do Westbury. I would a love night to of do comedy, Westbury. Light yeah, your pussy on fire. Whoever likes yeah. that pussy on fire gets five thousand. That night. No, listen, we, that's we, it. And any what? gay guy that lights his asshole on fire and puts a sparkler in it, I'm giving you five grand. We're, we're oh. going for big parties. I'll I'll send you I'll send you this book because no, like, just bring it to New York. Okay, bring, bring it to New York. It's it like an city. hour. It's like you take your shit on the fucking toilet. You smoke a joint. It's an hour and a half roller coaster ride. You know, I wrote it like a third grader because I'm a third grader. I like got three ninety on the SATs in English and I can't spell shit. And that's pretty much how I wrote the fucking book pretty much like that. I dictated it to one of my best buddies who did a nice job with it. And, uh, you know, and yeah, I, listen, I, I sell like at least 15 a day. People love it. I personalize it. You know, they want me to do the 15, 15, 30. So I say, Hey, listen, tell your girl, let, let her, let you eat her ass, lick her, clit and fuck her. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I always saw it, you know, my father taught me two things. If you can't eat it, don't fuck it. And no one, and no one ever got pregnant blowing your load in their mouth and their asshole. So a lot of these guys out there now, like, I don't want to get pregnant. I don't, I don't want to get a girl pregnant. I, hey, listen, so blow a load in the mouth and blow a load in their asshole, you know, and just eat the fucking pussy. That's the fucking bottom line, baby. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. I mean, that's really the bottom line. Now, do you know about this thing that Barstool has called rough and rowdy? Do you know what that is? You explained it to me. Okay, so, so like, Five and five, seven years ago, maybe eight years ago, 10 years ago, Dave Portnoy used to go to this psycho place in West Virginia, and it was called Rough and Rowdy. You would have 20 fights, three one minute rounds, and you would get local people in the area with no experience at all to just fucking murder each other. Three one minute rounds, 20 fights. P.S. Like, what are we in? So he bought it in 2016. 
And I think Barstool has put on 18 uh, fights. And most of them are in West Virginia. This one upcoming Friday is in Huntington, West Virginia. And it's the fucking most, it's the craziest thing ever. You get 20 fights, three one minute rounds. They have midgets fight. They have women fight. They have these psycho fucking girls walk around, ring girls, waving their asses in thongs, playing with their fucking pussies and their tits. And then at the end, you vote on the hottest ring girl. And then there's always a couple of major fights. So, this guy that I got very friendly with um, that works for them called Coach Dugs, And how he got a job at Barstool's, there was a cartoon of a video. Uh, there was a cartoon of him. He looks like a coach. And they hired him off of that. It's the craziest thing. This guy's like maybe about six to 500 pounds. And he's the main event. And he made me his manager. So we're fighting some guy in Canada. We, we don't know anything about this guy in Canada. All we know is he played fucking rugby for 12 years and looks like a killer. Now, my guy who's fighting Dugs, nicest fucking guy in the world. Very determined, high integrity. Not a killer. Not a killer. But he's trained his fucking dick off. Every day goes into the gym, throws up every day. You know, fucking it's crazy. So he's the main event. Uh, Friday night, and uh, they they sell like fifty thousand pay per view events. Matter of fact, they had Jose Canseco. Remember the the the, best, yes. uh, the baseball player? They had Jose Canseco fight somebody at Barstool. This guy, uh, Billy Hot Takes, and Jose Canseco got paid like a million dollars and took a dive. The first ten seconds into the round, Billy went at him. And he fell, and the fight was over. So it was crazy. It was unbelievable. But he made a million dollars. He sold like 150,000 pay per view events at like 50 bucks or something psycho like that. So everybody made money. So then now Dave puts up in the contract where you can't throw the fight, you know, you can't fix it. It's got to be a real fucking fight. But so on Friday, he's the main event. And then the second main event is this girl, Alex Bennett, that works at Barstool Tool. She's a sweetheart. Her and her mother have a podcast together, and she also has a couple of podcasts with a couple of other people. This great woman called Jordan Woodruff. They do a great thing together. And um, she's amazing. She's drop-dead gorgeous, the sweetest woman in the world. Her husband's father owns the Oklahoma City Thunder. So no one even knew that. She's working at Barstool. Everybody thinks she's like, you know, a grinder. Meanwhile, she's a fucking billionaire. But so she's fighting. She never fought in a fucking life. She never fought, but she's been fucking training like an animal. So those are the two main events. And then you have like three midgets fighting, three men midgets. And then you have girl midgets. And then you just have crazy people because it's only crazy three one. People. No, they're, they're crazy. Three one minute rounds. You go all out. I was supposed to fight. 2018, I was the headliner on my birthday, January 31st in Miami when the Super Bowl was in Miami. I'm training. I'm going to be the main event. I'm easily going to make between a quarter of a million to a half a million dollars because the deal then was I got a piece of the pay-per-view, a big chunk, and I moved the needle. Similarly, you moved the fucking needle. doesn't matter what you do. You can be taking a shit in the corner, taking a piss in front of everybody. The needle moved. Joey Diaz moves the fucking needle. Let's no go. one moved the needle. You know what I'm saying? You move the fucking needle, baby. You know what I'm saying? Clits stand up at attention. Fucking little nipples get fucking hot. You move the fucking needle. Men, women, children, den people come out of the grave. Well, I move the needle. So I'm fucking, <laughs> I'm training like a fucking animal. Training. Throw a punch. I tear my fucking bicep. From here, it comes up to here. Fucking done. Done. So wait. Hey, Dave, what's the compensation? Uh, dick. Dick. No, no. What, what, you don't pay for the operation. You know, nothing. Hey, Stu, it's the fucking fight game. It's brutal. So I, I made nothing. Nothing. So I get the operation. Not only this, the operation doesn't go good. I'm in a fucking brace for nine months because my hand was like locked in like this. I had to wear a brace to open my hand up for five hours a day. For nine months, hell. I wanted to kill myself. And, you know, I, I said, Dave, no conversation. He's like, hey, it's a tough break. <laughs> tough break. And that's the truth. That's the fight game. It's a tough fucking break. Just like, you know, these UFC guys, they fight, they grind. You get fucking hurt, your career's over before you made the big money. Hey, that's the fucking way it is. You know, Dave says, hey, Stu, I gave you an opportunity to make a quarter of a million to half a million dollars if you didn't get hurt. That's the positive. The negative is you're 57 and a fat fucking slob and you got fucking hurt. 
Big deal. Hey, it's over. You know, just like fucking David, Daniel White says, hey, I give you the platform. You think I'm underpaying you? Where the fuck can you have a shot to have your fucking face in front of the fucking world, motherfucker? Grind it out. You fucking you stay healthy and make it. So, um, so now I'm a manager. You know, I'm a manager, so I'm, I don't know. Like, I'm going to, like, our theme song to walk out for the fight is Hulk Hogan. Say, so after we're done with this, I'm going to Party City, I'm getting a Hulk Hogan costume. And I'm going to come out as Hulk Hogan screaming and yelling and then hyping the place up. And then uh, it's so much fun. you got to come to the next one. Obviously, I, you're going away. I think you're going to the North Carolina or something on yeah. vacation, right? Okay, so the next one, I think, is in November or something. But it is so wild. It is so, you, it, you, it's crazy. It's like WWE or WWF wrestling, but real. Because but they don't do it in Jersey out. and nothing like that. Long but, Island, um, the rule, the law, state laws. Right? Or something. They yeah. haven't passed. They they won't allow it yet. But eventually they will. They won't allow it. Correct. But eventually they they allowed one in um, uh, Providence, Rhode Island, which is the closest to uh, Boston, and most of them are in West Virginia. Huntington, West Virginia, all of the, all these towns in West Virginia. So Huntington is right where the uh, University Marshall is. So uh, Marshall University, the college where right, yeah, yeah, yeah. where that where that plane went down and killed right. like two hundred people, and the whole football team was wiped out. Yeah. So in other words, and then uh, Matthew McConaughey made the movie about it. So so uh, yeah. So that's what's going on now. So I'm so psyched, and I'm so, and I like. So what I do every day right now is I grind out with my voice. I do what's called these Stu Finer shout outs, whether it's your birthday, anniversary, bachelor party, you want to motherfuck somebody to death, or I read the fantasy football lineup. I pick the order and then I read it and then they give me some bullet points and I torch the fucking people. And so I'm doing between seven to 20 a day diving off my fucking diving board. It's 125 if I sit on the board and read it. 175, I dive in the fucking pool. But this is, <laughs> but this is like a three. I'm, this is like a. I'm writing like 10,000 a week. Yeah, I'm it's like a part three to job. three to four minute pitch. So I have no voice. At the end of the day, I'm spraying my voice. I'm trying to figure. You know, I, I'm over a hot fucking a uh, hot like vapor thing doing his fixed vapor rug. I'm running. My greatest fear is to wake up with no fucking voice because I'm done. Like tits on a bull. I'm useless. What I, I, my dick, my dick right now, since I lost like a little bit, I, cause I measure it. Cause I'm a stupid fucking, I'm a psycho is six and an eighth. When I was super fat, it was five and seven eighth. So I gained like a quarter inch quarter inch works, baby. You know, whatever, every little quarter inch works when you only got that. You know, and then if, if I can't, if they need more than six and a fucking eighth inch, I got two fucking fists, motherfucker. These fists going, look, fucking fists, fuck you. That's what I fucking do. And if the fists don't work, I carry a 12 inch vibrator with my face on again. My tongue goes, Aah. it hits that fucking clitoris. Or I swallow pink champagne, put it in my mouth, go down, eat the pussy, and these little bubbles go, blah, 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 and they hit the clitoris that stands at attention, and they go, stew, 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 I love you, I never felt like this, now I know what I've been missing, I'm like, tell me something you don't know, you bitch, and that's really how we roll, so, I'm Stuart, sorry, I gotta I'm ask excited. you something, brother, I, I am fucking excited when I talk, I'm excited. I gotta ask you something, we're both around the same age, we grew up in the city, when the city was the city, we grew up in this world when, when this world was easy to explain to people. Now oh. it's a hard oh. world to explain to people. And it's kind of weird for guys like you and I. And I'm I'm asking you this just out as a, as a concern, not because I don't give a fuck. And I could see, obviously, you don't give a fuck. Do you ever have any thoughts of somebody might raise their hand and go, what the fuck is Stu and Joey Diaz doing on the podcast they're all the gentlemen. They're out there yelling about you got to eat somebody's pussy and you got to finger bang them or midgets. I don't give a fuck. You know, you and I come from a time that I understand that it's, listen, a lot of BLM, a lot of all this stuff. I get it. But I can't stop saying the word faggot because I've been saying it for 30 years, 40, 50 years, and now you want to change the rules. So there's all these rules that are coming up, you know, by if you, who's over there looking at you? Your son is over there. I know it's good. I, I don't sure. give a fuck. I want him to say hello. But it's so weird how do you have any fear of this that somebody's going to call uh, Barstool and go, what's this guy yelling about? Because I love you. I love it. 
but there's in the, today's world. But I also feel that there's three people that you can't cancel, and that's me, you, and Pete Rose, because we're going to tell you to suck our dick, okay? Well, I refuse to let somebody judge me that's not a fucking judge. And I'm talking about the judge that put his hand on the chick's mouth. He's a 20th Circuit, whatever the fuck he is, Supreme Court Justice. In my world, if he tells me to get off the internet, I will listen. It's I fucked up. But nobody, nobody got the right to fucking say, Stu Finer, we got to get him off. I put a minute on. I got offended. How do you feel about this, Stu? Well, I mean, obviously, Dave Portnoy um, loves me and unconditionally has my back. You know, barring me going off the rails where I would hurt the company, uh, I can get away with murder. I'm almost untouchable. You know what I mean? I'm right. uncancelable. We're all the same. But, right. but, but that's not the case on Twitter or on Instagram or on Facebook or on Snapchat. Let me give you a perfect example. It's so amazing you said this perfect example. Saturday, Saturday, my buddy buys a breathtaking car, brand new, refurbishes like a 1957 old school breathtaking car. Blow, you know, buys the car for 20, puts 30 into the car, okay? He puts the car online and I look at the car and my exact comment right to him, right under it is, I wanna fuck you and eat your ass in that car. Immediately. Facebook suspends me. I cannot post for three days. And now for the next 30 days, well, now it's the next 27 days. They put my feed at the bottom of everybody's post. So in other words, I have to adjust because I do not want, like they've pulled down my Twitter twice already with a hundred and some odd thousand followers. I'm shadow banned everywhere. Like I should have a million to 2 million followers on Instagram and Twitter, but similar to what you're saying, because of my sexual content, because of the rage I come at people, which absolutely can be misused as being a psycho, as threatening somebody, as being in someone's face. They don't get my intent. They don't know my intent, nor do they care. They just blatantly do it. So I, I have to be extremely, extremely careful to not be taking off Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat. I just gave you a perfect example. Now I'm, I'm restricted. I'm shadow bin where I do not go into people's feeds. Like uh, my content, a lot of times, unless you actually come to my page and click your, my stuff does not pop up in people's feeds. So they, they, what's called shadow banned me. They always had, they always did like my, my key, my key saying is I will kill your bookmaker. That doesn't work no more. Can't say it because the word kill they're taking literally where I'm, I don't mean it literally. I mean, it's figuratively, you know, I will win money for the client and, and hurt the bookmaker. And that's a euphemism for kill. Can't use the word kill no more. Even my 15, 1530, where I think on the prior podcast, I told you I created the perfect hour of sex, 15 minutes eating ass, 15 minutes licking clit, 30 minutes fucking. You can't hold your load, bring a vibrator. I can't get away with that no more. There's, there's, you can't say it. People, people cannot say it online, cannot say it because, again, I don't even know it, but they shadow ban everything. What happened with Dave Portnoy, where he got accused by these business insiders, these low light piece of shit scumbags, accused him of stuff that he pat, they were patently false. It was not true. He's suing them. But, but now if you, his feed, his feed does not go into your feed. He's shadow banned now. So in other words, when you say to me, do I give a fuck? Um, will it change me? No, but I have to be careful with what I say. I literally have to be careful because my message won't get out. As it is, my message doesn't get out. I'm only in like 11% of people's feeds. So it does suck. But when, you, but when you say that to me, you know, I understand what you're coming from because the content is you're saying it to your asshole buddy. You know, just like Joe said, hey, I want to call somebody that because it's his fucking birthday. You know, I, I love the guy. Like, I can call my friend up, my best friends, and say, hey, your wife's over here fucking blowing me. I'll, I'm going to be over your house about 10 minutes. Let her just clean up. They know what that means. That's love. That's fucking, you know, you could say that to your asshole buddies. You could say that to your best friends. But you cannot say it to the world because they're going to take it literally and they're going to say that we're a bad influence on people where it's the direct opposite. We're showing people that you have to have a sense of humor. Don't take yourself so seriously. It isn't a literal 
uh, representation, it's figurative, and we're comedians. But again, you know, the the walls are coming in on us, very squeezed. We're squeezed. We're getting squeezed. We're literally getting squeezed. There's no issue about that. Really, I'm is. not getting squeezed. I, I understand. We're also businessmen, so Facebook shut me down like three times this this year so far. One for thirty. I'm thinking of taking it down because Facebook don't do dick for me anyway. It's just a bunch of people from school or whatever you communicate with. They don't reach out. So, you know, it, it doesn't, uh, I don't even want those people involved with in what I'm doing in a way. But Instagram. Oh, my Facebook, God. Say, wait, hold it. Facebook owns Instagram. Right. So, fuck so Instagram. It, it, that, right. That they, scares it, me. But Instagram right. is my bread and butt. You know, I right. like Instagram. Right. They take down all my weed stuff. Right. But there's right. a chick sucking a dick there. No, you know what it is? Twitter, it's, there's it's, two chicks that suck dick all day on Twitter. Very subjective, very subjective who they enforce and who they let slide. When I smoke a blunt and I show it on camera, for the next month, my calls, my my feed, and my views are 80% down because of the marijuana, like you just said. Because in certain states, it's still not legal, and they don't want that to the general consumer. You know what I mean? It's almost like they really should have two Twitters and two Instagrams. They should have an Instagram for 21 and under, which you and me, we would know how to play that. And Twitter and Instagram 21 and over where we're just anything goes. Everything goes. Let's fucking go. Just like an R rated movie or an NC 17 movie. You know what you're getting. You know what you're getting involved with. Let's fucking go. But that's not what we do. So unfortunately, especially the way we do our content, they judge us as a three to 11 year old could be looking at it, being influenced, does not understand the message, does not have the skill set to understand where we're coming from. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, that hurts. That really does hurt. So, uh, you know, but face, I love Facebook. Cause like, like you said, those are my friends. They don't, they're not on Instagram and Twitter. No, they use they're Instagram not. My and Twitter. are not on Instagram. Those are, you know, those are the people that are our age that are not internet savvy that have no idea. And they just want to click on, you know, so a lot of things that I do, like my motivational message, my motivational speeches, my eating clean, my running videos, my telling people, you know, the way out is the way through disagree, Set free. Don't ever let fucking tell somebody tell you they can't do it. Failure after failure. Don't lose your enthusiasm. That's a positive message. But they destroy when I motherfuck people and I do words and I get a little, you know, I get very edgy like you do. I go way over the top. I cross. There is no line. I'm fucking in your fucking wife's yeah. bush. I'm like eating her anymore. ass. You know, so in other words, you know, so it's, 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 uh, I have to walk a very, very thin line. A very thin line. I don't like it. it. It inhibits me certain times, but I don't have a choice. You know what I mean? I, I don't have a choice. You know, I'm not as big as you, to be honest with you. You know, yes, you I'm, are, brother. Well, You're a fucking. Well, I'm. I'm these I'm, kids I'm, down the block from me at El Nido. <laughs> every time I see these motherfuckers, they ask me about you. <laughs> so I surprised them the other day and said, "He's going to be doing the shows with me, all of them, all of them. He'll be there. You can talk to him, whatever the fuck. He's dancing. He's taking off his whatever." These guys are so excited to meet you. I thought they were excited about meeting Bert. They were like, fuck Bert. We want to go with <laughs> Stu Fina. I'm like, okay. You can come see fucking Stu Fina. But no, we're, uh, now I'm starting to get what I'm doing finally. Like I'm starting to, you know, I was reading some jujitsu thing about training when you're older. And they're like, you know, you're in there to set an example some days. You know, you like I do the warm ups. I don't care if my knee hurts. You know, I get there on time and all. And that's all great and dandy, and that's what I'm trying to do with the podcast now. I've always been like you. Don't believe the fucking hype. You can do whatever the fuck you want, even with felonies, if you put your mind to it. They'll tell you you can't do it. In prison, when you get released, they ask you if you want to go on disability because the felony will hold you back from being anything in your life. You sign that paperwork, you're dead. You're living on 800 a month for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, and until you end back up in jail, because that's what you've committed to being a felon. When I got out of there, even now, if I order, if I, if I got to go apply for a job, I was—I don't even know what you're talking about. Do you have a felony in the last three years? No, I don't, I don't know nothing. And then let them come back to me and go, well, we did a background check. Jose, you got a felony. That's great. That's for a guy who has a felony and wears that as Superman. I don't give a fuck. I got it as a reminder to let me know I'm never going back there. But I'm not laying, I'm no laid down Sally. 
I don't give a fuck what they tell you. You got to keep pushing forward. And that's our message, which is positive. But every once in a while, you get some fucking jerk off and you got to tell them to suck your dick. Boom, you're canceled. Twitter, on the other hand, I got no complaint about Twitter. Mike has been my dear friend for years. He knows what I post on Twitter. <laughs> If they go in deep in my Twitter, they're going to find some shit and fucking... But I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to make up an excuse. I, I can't make an excuse. You know, I love Osama... What's his name? Uh, Obama's wife. I fucking yeah, love her. You know, I, I haven't seen her lately. She was getting big. But for a while there, I like. I really like her. I think she's attractive with the mouth, the whole thing. And one day I wrote on there, I'll suck the black ink out of her pussy. And fucking... Oh, my God. I got, like, hatred. But I'm just saying how good of a looking of a woman she is. I didn't mean nothing... But if somebody sees that now from 2016, which I'm letting you know is on there, I don't even give a fuck. Go, do what you got to do. Right. It was like a you gave her you gave her literally a the ultimate compliment. Women love that to be she was so gorgeous. Fuck that yeah. you would want to literally be with her. I'll and blow the, the I'll drink the champagne, it, the pink right, champagne. The I'll eat a pussy. It. I'll fucking right. spit. In, I'll do everything to Miss. But they took life. that literal as as an affront to you know the first lady and they thought that was demeaning and degrading where that's the direct opposite of what you, what do you did. mean the first lady the first direct lady opposite. like cock jack they all like right. cock the but other I'm first saying, ladies were just a hundred years old they weren't you know nancy reagan just say no she don't want no cock you know that poor bitch she didn't even know the cock was when she was in the fucking white house <laughs> i heard she was sucking uh frank sinatra's dick I heard that. I don't know how yeah, true it is. I, 100% true. When Ronald Reagan used to call in, because I read like five books on Reagan and on Sinatra and on Nancy Reagan. She she loved his dick. She loved it. I mean, I wasn't let's, there. Let's I, get something out of the way. Everybody likes Sinatra's dick. I guess that's true. Everybody. I mean, yeah, every right, fucking right, woman. Right, fat, right. I'm saying the obvious. More. True. That's true. That is true. I, Stu, I, I, knew, true. I know you're doing great with fucking baseball right now. When does your football package start? The 10th of August? Uh, um, September? Uh, yes. You know what it is? Because preseason now is very shaky because five years ago, preseason, they played for real. And they wanted to win, but now they don't because they added a game to the NFL. So preseason is very, very shaky. So I still get out preseason, and I'm still going to long games this weekend. You got games Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I'm going to go for it. But it's just not – people don't like to bet it as much. Right. Years ago, I was able to sell it, and it was great. But, yeah, September 10th uh, starts the first football game, and we'll be able ready to roll. The NFL is going to be fucking amazing. Amazing this year. Now. College, college football starts, starts the end of, uh, September 10th. And college, college also? College starts August 27th. Oh, shit. That's coming yeah. quick this there's year. Like, That's next Saturday. Like, yeah, it's like 10 games, 12 games, and then you got your Labor Day, and then you're full, full blown, baby. Where can these Saturdays, Saturdays get football. you? Do you have anything for this U Saturday's UFC? It's a big card. I'm pushing on DraftKings. Um, I normally give out the UFC for free. Okay. I don't really sell it. You know what I mean? Like if you buy the package and I have a selection on it, I give it for free. But as a rule of thumb for me, UFC, underdogs. Fucking underdogs. The favorites don't cover. They rarely cover. Like, I mean, obviously when Khabib's fighting McGregor, you're betting Khabib because he fights bears and he's a psycho and he's never lost and he's never going to lose. You know what I mean? Like the certain people, but, but most of the time, if you bet the underdog, the entire card, you bet all the dogs in the UFC, you're going to make money. You're just going to make money. And you make money with the underdogs. Cause those absolutely. fucking favorites pay $10 and well, they got I, great props too. A lot of these places, different books have great props. Like I won a, a fucking handful of dough by mistake. I bet $20 on like a pool that uh, Moreno would knock out that dude last week, two weeks ago. It was like 20 bucks it. to win 150. Wow. How can right. you not fucking go with that? So there's always little side things. Right. But and still, I, love that, right. I love betting the underdogs because it's exciting. You know what I'm saying? You bet the favorite, he's supposed to fucking it's win. Fucking you know, like, easy. Right. But uh, yeah, so I mean, the underdogs would be the way to go in UFC on an overall picture. Overall picture, yes. You made my Tuesday. I'm happy. I we fucking did this listen. Zoom. It's, I love you. We'll so do another much. one before the show on the 17th. Done get deal. ready for football season. Done and deal. then when I get back, I want to go over to Barstool. Yes, get KFC's back the, ready for you. Not the fucking not the week before Labor Day because everybody's thinking about Ugats. Okay. After that, after we're Labor Day, it forward. I got some other things. And uh, we're going to make those shows in New York City a fucking trip. And Can't they're wait. all leading to your movie theater in Westbury. All right, let's do it. some other comics, and we'll do a nice little fucking... Uh, Abby, 
Okay. We'll That's how we that do it, brother. With and you get your bucket it. list. I'm doing it for you. Got I, lo- I love you. Because they just offered me the Paramount. I said, no, not yet. But if you want to do, we could do it like next June. I can do the Paramount with you. I'm ready. Let's no, not it. the Paramount. The oh, Westbury. They, oh, Westbury. That's where you oh, want right. to go. So let's West, make your dream right. come true. Done. Westbury. June. Westbury. I June. love you. I love Stay you. Stay black. Don't forget the yarmulke, brother. That I love you. Stu has the only yarmulke that's got a thousand dollar bill hidden in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah! And a condom. You got it. I love, love you, brother. Joey. Stay Thank black. You. My best to your family, your wife, Thank and your you. children. Vice Thank you for being a great friend. You got okay. it, Tarzan. All right. I want to thank Stu Finer, but most importantly, I want to thank you fucking savages for always supporting the show. But this week, we got Factor. You're like, Joey, what's Factor? Factor is a ready-to-eat meal delivery. With Factor, a quick lunch or a dinner is just two minutes away. They heat and eat meals are a lifesaver. You understand me? My wife loves them. Factor offers 30 meals per week, and you can change your order every week. Choose from four to 18 meals per week, and you can pause or reschedule deliveries anytime. Stop spending hours in the kitchen and at the store waiting on line. People breathing on you. Let Factor deliver ready-made meals right to your door. They offer vegan, veggie, keto cold pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, and a lot, lot more. So do me a favor. Head on over to go.factor75.com slash joey130. Again, use code joey130 to get $130 off across six boxes. That's code joey130 at gofactor, go.factor75.com slash joey130. Listen, I'm not going to tell you again. Saturday night, it's all going down. It's UFC 278. Usman versus Edwards, and the action starts at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. This fucking Saturday, they got a tremendous card. You could bet $5 on any fighter and get 200 free bets, win or lose. They're doing you a big fucking favor. DraftKings is the best when it comes to football, baseball, basketball, but the UFC, tremendous. They also offer a $10 risk-free same-day party. You combine fucking multiple bets if they're going to last the three rounds or the five. I love draft picks. I love draft kings. I love this card. The reason I love draft kings is they're safe, secure, and reliable. And you can withdraw your cash whenever you want. But they also make sports gambling fun. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now, today. Use promo code Joey. I'll tell you what else they got that's great. The Fucking DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Daily Fantasy, they're offering like a million dollars in prizes and you're here jumping up and down. I'm giving you a reason to jump up and down. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and download the Fantasy app. And here's the part the lawyers make me say. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See my show notes for details. DraftKings. Now go win some fucking Gitas. The joint is also brought to you by Blue Chew. Listen. I'm not saying you have erectile dysfunction problems, but what I'm saying is you can use more confidence when you come into a situation. Blue Chew is an online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets, all at a fraction of the cost. I love them. I love Blue Chew. They're easy. You can take them on an empty stomach in the morning, whenever the fuck you ready to make love. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of the medical providers. Once you're approved, you receive your prescription within days in the mail. Nobody even knows you're getting them. The best part of it, it's all done online. No visits to the doctors, no awkward conversations, no waiting online at the pharmacy. Listen, Blue Chew tablets are made in the U.S. and shipped in a discreet package. I'm not saying you got a deep, but if you could benefit from a little extra confidence, what the fuck, guys? Blue Chew can help you. Try Blue Chew for free when using promo code JOEY. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Code Joey for the first month for free. Visit BlueChew.com for important safety information and thank BlueChew for sponsoring the joint. I want to thank BlueChew, DraftKings, Liquid IV, anybody who was in our world this week. But most importantly, I want to thank you, Savages. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you cocksuckers Monday morning. Tip top, Magoo, maybe.